Hello students and welcome to Genie 250 Making of the Christian Life. I'm Dr. Michael Lucas. You can call me Dr. Mike and I'm privileged and really excited to serve as your instructor for the next eight weeks as we begin our course today. And I wanted to take some time to come to you by way of video just to give you an overview of the course and answer a few questions that might pop up for you right now and help set the pace and the direction for week one. A little bit of background about myself. I have been in full-time church and pastoral ministry for the past, past 42 years. I've been located here in Virginia Beach for the last 21 uh, among the Churches of Christ and have been working as the senior pastor for the Bayside Church of Christ here in Virginia Beach since 2000. We've had a wonderful life here in the Mid-Atlantic region and I'm just so excited to be a part of the Regent University community, which I first joined as a student way back in 2013 when I began my Master of Divinity work and finished it and then moved on and worked on my Doctor of Ministry, completing that in 2019. So I've got great connections here. I've had a positive experience at Regent through the School of Divinity. And I'm anticipating and hoping that you've had a similar experience with the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, I have taught this course uh, recently. It's a new course. And so I'm excited for what we're going to experience in this course. I've also taught Genie 100, Making of the Christian Mind, and Genie 150, The True, Good, and Beautiful, several times here in the College of Arts and Sciences. So it's my pleasure to introduce myself to you and to be available for you as hopefully a faithful, faithful guide in this course. Let's talk a little bit about what this course involves. Genie 250, titled Making of the Christian Life, is intended to give us an academic exploration of some vital topics concerning how we establish moral foundations for not just the Christian life, but life in general, culturally, in families, institutionally, governments and in communities, certainly globally in how we relate to other, other people groups, other ethnicities, races, and nationalities around the globe. But obviously, from a biblical worldview, using what's known as the Decalogue, uh, otherwise more informally known as the Ten Commandments, that are found embedded in the Old Testament books of the law, particularly in Exodus and Deuteronomy. What we're gonna be doing in this course is looking critically at how we establish standards for morality, moral reasoning, ethical behavior, and therefore how to build a life that thrives or flourishes. What we're going to be doing is examining each of the Ten Commandments in light of both historical understandings of what it means to have uh, what's referred to by both ancient and contemporary philosophers as a foundation for moral reasoning. We're going to use some, some phrases interchangeably in our course. We're going to talk about moral law natural law, which is a bit different than the laws of nature. We're going to get into all of those similarities and differences. But we're going to fine tune that just a bit when we start talking about what's known as divine law, based upon what God has revealed to us in the scripture, combined with what the scripture claims God has embedded in us by nature. In Romans chapter 2, when Paul talks about the Apostle Paul talks about God having embedded in our hearts or given us insight into morality, moral law, an understanding innately of what is right and what is wrong. We're going to look at all of these principles logically, philosophically, biblically, spiritually, certainly culturally, to determine if in fact there is a standard by which God has always intended for us to determine what is right and what is wrong and how to apply that to our personal lives, our relationships to others, our relationship to the community and world around us, 
and the mission and purposes, particularly for those who have come to know Christ and are pursuing his kingdom and working alongside God to accomplish his kingdom purposes in the world. So we're going to be we're going to be traveling back in time and uh, reading from such ancient philosophers as Plato. Moving forward, philosophers and theologians like uh, um, St. Thomas Aquinas. But then we're going to move in a more contemporary way into the 20th century and read after logicians and philosophers, ethicists, as well as Christian apologists like C.S. Lewis. We're also going to be looking at some vital um, influencers of morality and justice in more recent history as we, as we read some of the writings of Dr. Martin Luther King. We're going to be looking, for example, at moral issues concerning uh, the sanctity of life and recent Supreme Court in the last 20 years or so, Supreme Court cases that uh, point us in a direction about how to make moral decisions in the defense of life, either at the beginning of life or at the end of life. So you can see, we're going to have a variety of uh, themes and issues and topics, subjects to address on the course. I'm really excited for you to have this experience with us. Uh, I've, I've been so enriched by this study, and I believe you will be as well. Well, let's get into a few mechanics here as we open week one. Obviously, uh, we'll need to open and, and read through the course syllabus. It's going to be your roadmap for the course. Uh, all eight weeks are found there. We're going to need to get into the uh, course content folders. There's one for each week in Blackboard, the shell of our course, after some introduction materials from our dean, Dr. Josh McMullen, and a few others helping to orient us on the nature of Genie 250. So I want to invite you to begin exploring those content folders and seeing what we're going to be discussing, what we're going to be reading, the things that we're going to be writing about and sharing in group dialogues and discussions about. I think you'll be excited uh, and challenged in good ways in, in what you find. Let's return to that syllabus for just a moment. The syllabus is not only our roadmap for the course, but in week one, our syllabus becomes one major way that you communicate with the registrar's office that you indeed intend to stay enrolled in our course. So there's a short syllabus quiz. You're going to ace it. As soon as you read through it, you'll go take the four question quiz and you'll find that that it's easy enough. It's intended to ensure that you've read the syllabus and, and know what's coming in the course. But it's also connected to your enrollment in the course. When you take that syllabus quiz and complete it, it's going to send a message to the registrar's office that you did so and that by doing so, you're indicating, yes, all things being equal and where I stand right now, I fully intend to stay enrolled in this course the entire eight weeks. Now, in the event that you uh, do not take that syllabus quiz, don't be surprised that you were to get an email or perhaps a phone call from someone representing the registrar's office just wanting to confirm your plans to stay in the course. We wouldn't want you to be administratively dropped from the course. That becomes a hassle that you probably didn't intend. We're excited for you to be able to stay with us the entire time. Now, I realize there can be some overscheduling, and when you look at other courses you're taking, you realize, wow, I wanted to take this one now, but I may have to reschedule. We understand all of that. But this is more about confirming that you are indeed planning to stay. So read the syllabus, keep it nearby, Take the syllabus quiz by the end of the first week. By the way, all of our week's works, weeks one through eight, will begin on Monday and will end on Sunday. You're going to see timestamps for uh, the required submissions for uh, uh, assignments that we will be doing, but we work on a seven-day Monday to Sunday basis. For our course, we're going to be providing all of the documents that you need in electronic formats or video links so that you won't need anything other than two, two textbooks. One is your Bible, 
And uh, another is this book written by Philip Graham Riken titled Written in Stone. It's an excellent work that provides great overview of understanding uh, the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments. We're going to be working out of this pretty regularly. There are times that we're going to be loading up the sections you'll read in the course content folders in PDF format. Uh, so it'll always be available for you, but I would encourage you secure your own copy because you'll want to do some more in-depth reading on this, I believe. So this is the re one required text in addition to your Bibles. Be sure to pick that up before uh, we get too far into the course this week. One other thing I want you to do this week in week one is to go to the uh, a discussion board area, not your groups area. We'll talk about that in a moment. Go to the discussion board area and there you'll find a link to a forum called Say Hello. Go there, take a few moments and introduce yourself to our fellow classmates and to me as well. Uh, give us just a few lines about yourself, certainly your name, uh, where you're from right now or located, what your background is, maybe family-wise, marital status, children or otherwise, what your career choices are, or maybe full-time student, maybe what you're majoring in right now and how you hope to use your degree. Uh, share a little bit with us there, and I'll meet you there later in the week to say hello. Be sure to do that in the community discussion board area where it says, where it says, hey, say hello. One other matter, this week, go to the groups area, little tab right there on the green banner where all of our access in our course shell to the various areas will be, click on groups. You'll find two group areas. Click open group and you should see your name listed there. If you do not see your name listed in a group, uh, be sure to email me. It's likely that you were a late registrant to the course because I've already set up the two groups. And as soon as you email me, let me know that you weren't there. I'll find you, I'll pop you in one of the groups. Because throughout the course, we're going to have two different discussion board dialogue assignments, one in week three and one in week seven. And we want to be sure that you're in those discussion board areas, those groups areas. So do that this week. Now, let's get to our assignments and I'll wrap us up for this week. Uh, chapters one and three from Riken, PDF forms of those are available in course content week one, chapters one and three, an introduction to the Decalogue and interpreting God's law, chapters one and chapters three, reading for this week. There is a series of five video links that you'll find there that are called Doodles videos. And what they are are recreations visually and, and uh, audibly of um, C.S. Lewis, perhaps the greatest philosopher of the 20th century and one of the greatest apologists in recent centuries concerning Christianity and the concepts of moral reasoning and moral law. There are five of those. They vary in length. Uh, you'll be watching those this week. Take notes. Uh, let me know what you think if you have any questions or concerns. So are those, there are five of those to look at this week. And then there is our week one syllabus quiz. Be sure to complete that by this coming Sunday, end, end of day. One final matter. Uh, you'll find in um, instructor info both my faculty email address along with my mobile phone. You'll also see in the syllabus when the best times to reach me by email, by text, or phone call would be. I'll work to respond to you within the day, usually within a few hours. Uh, but you're welcome to contact me, and uh, I'm nearby if needed. So be sure to feel comfortable. You'll not be bothering me. I'm here for you to answer any questions and hopefully be a reliable, faithful guide to you through our course. So once again... Dr. Mike here, excited for this journey together. I've already begun to pray for you, and I'm nearby if needed. Let's have a great beginning week one. God bless you.